Hello, everybody, and welcome to another financial modeling webinar series from Debron Consulting. This is the September 2018 episode, and we're talking about top five uses of timing in models, in financial models. So what are we going to talk about? The importance of timing in the financial model. Excel tools used to manage timing, and then our various techniques. We have some interesting techniques that are very efficient and very scalable that you can use for timing. So we have five demos we're going to do identifying a single time period, identifying a time block, identifying an intermittent time period, and then identifying a cascading time period, and then managing two time periodicities in a model. So you have periodicity in a model is when a model is a quarterly model, is it a monthly model, is it an annual model? Let's assume you do a monthly model, that's the periodicity of the model is monthly, and you want to show an annual output. So you have two, diff two different periodicities, monthly and annual. How do you manage that? And then we we'll talk about the certification and the exams for next month. So the importance of timing in a model. Why is that so important? Why is timing such a critical thing in a model? Well, one of the biggest challenges really is identifying a particular time period. And then once you identify that time period, try and make it flexible. So that when someone changes, let's assume someone says equity is going to be contributed on the 25th of October next year. Now, you're not 100% sure that equity will be contributed at that time. So what you do as a modeler is you make it dynamic. So someone can go and type in a, another date and the equity will be contributed on that precise date. Or you could say, oh, it's going to be contributed a so-so month or so-so quarter. So those are timing uh, especially for project finance models, you have a lot of timing things. When is construction starting? When is construction ending? Timing is very critical. But as a modeler, you must build flexibility so you don't need to save 10 versions of the model. It just works. So I've given you already examples, but here are some more. An equity contribution that may come in in year three of the model or year four. How do you time it? How do you automate that? so that it just comes in at the right time. Or debt, debt, when does debt come in? When does debt start? What kind of debt is it in the in the first place? What kind of debt is it? And when is the money coming in? When are the uh, repayments expected? Those are the kind of things you're looking at. So depreciation, for example, is also a timing thing. How, how many years are we depreciating this asset? We're going to start depreciation on the day we buy the asset and then we're going to depreciate for six years. Then what about if someone changes it to four years? Can Is there a cell in your model that you just change from six to four and then it automatically works? That's what we're talking about timing. You should be able to build that into your model to make it dynamic. Then of course, periodicity, a monthly model and you want to show annual reports from a monthly model. That's you have two periodicities. How do you do that? So timing is critical. You need to be able to be in control, be the master of timing in your model. That's where you'll be able to build a lot of flexibilities into your model. And I think when you learn how to build a normal three statement model and you want to now progress into project finance modeling, you need to be a master of timing. You really need to be a master of timing because there's more precision in a project finance model. So Excel tools used to manage timing in the model. What are the tools we have available to us? So Boolean, is it bool I think it's Boolean they call it, as in true and false. You need to be able to understand how to build, um, how I call it, it's almost like a fact sheet or a fact row, a fact column. I mean, trying to identify is this thing true or false? Do you meet the timing or you don't meet the timing? So every single time block in your model, and your time blocks in your model are columns because times move across a row. So you have column one, could be uh, year one, column two, year two, column three is year four, or year three, year four, like that. So you need to be able to identify this thing, this transaction, Does it is it valid for this time? Is it true? Yes, it's valid. Or false? No, it's not valid. You need... That's how, that's the beginning bits of, of using timing in models. So how do you go about that? Key thing is logic. You need to understand logical calculations and logical operators in a model. What are the logical operators in a model and how do we use those logical operators to carry out logical calculations? 
right? So you are, there are six logical operators in any model. You have the equal to, that means something is equal to something. Less than, something is less than something. Greater, less than or equal to, that's how we write it in the model, the third one. Less than or equal to. Then you have greater than, and then you have greater than or equal to, and then you have not equal to. So not equal to is less than and greater than together. That's how you write not equal to. So these are the six logical operators in any financial model or any calculation you want. And how do you implement it? By simply saying something, maybe cell A5. Are you greater than cell A6? That's, that's how you use logical operators in your financial model to test conditions. And then it will give you a true or a false. Yeah. Now, there are some logical functions as well in Excel. So logical functions. And the ones you use quite a lot will be and, or, if. And now there are ifs. There's a function called ifs that allows you to do more than one condition. Because your if says, if this condition is true, do this. If it's not true, do that. Or your ifs is multiple conditions. And then for those that, that know Power BI, Power BI introduced a function called switch. That's the DAX. DAX is data analysis expressions. It's a new language for Power Pivot in Excel and Power BI and uh, SSAS. Uh, so switch is a really cool logical operator. It, it says, it gives a test and then various conditions after the test. But really, I, I won't be talking much about switch. It's, it's just check it out in Excel. It's an excellent new function called switch. In fact, there's another one called XR, which has something to do with even and odd numbers and whether an odd number is true or even numbers, even condition is true. Something interesting and complex. But you really don't need that for most financial models. So that's XR. I didn't list that here. So you have and, or, and if. Really, that's the most you will use. Ifs, switch, XOR, and the other fancy ones, not really. And frankly speaking, the technique we're going to use will not really use much of this function. So we're going to show you a different technique. So yes, another handy tool is mod, the mod function. Mod is yeah, what when you do a calculation like a, a number divided by another number, you get a, remi a remainder. That remainder is what mode uses, but I think we'll probably use this. I use this a lot when I want to identify time periods like quarters, every quarter, semi-annual time periods and stuff like that. So we'll see how that works. Right. So finally, the big tools you need when you want to build your model and put in timing is counters, masks, and flags. We're going to look at them throughout this uh, demo. Counters masks and flags are your secret weapon when it comes to building models with excellent timing built in super timing built in and timing that you can easily explain to anyone and not use what what people call nested ifs you don't use all those nested ifs you use counters masks and flags that's what you should use and of course for you to use that well you need to know how to use cell referencing very well you need to be very good at using cell referencing. Is it is it a dollar two or is it dollar a dollar two or is it a a a dollar a two or is it just a two? You see those re referring to a cell, a reference is very important. There are four kind of references. We we'll look at that as well, right? So we've seen masks, we've seen flags, all these funny things. I'm saying, what can we do? I mean, what do I mean by all this? Can we jump into understanding how all these things work, right? So we'll start off with the demo. Let me share my screen to see the, the demo side. So our first demo, the first thing we're gonna do with the demo is identify a single time period. We'll start simple, all right? We're going to just identify a single time period. And here I have all the demos I want to go through with you, to you the guys. Let's just do that. Here, I have my demo. So identify a single time period, that's our first demo. Let's look at that. Right. So see this simple, we have this here flag. 2022 is when we want to bring in equity of 100 and let me just put 100,000. Yeah, we want to bring in equity of a of 100,000. This equity of $100,000, we want to bring it in at a certain time period, right? Uh, let me put Naira actually, 100,000 Naira. Right. So that means here I want to be zero. It's what I want to see, zero, 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 100, one, two, three, uh, zero, zero, right. 
that's the answer, right? This is the manual approach, obviously. Uh, what we're saying is we shouldn't be using the manual approach, should we? We should use the automated approach. So if we change this to uh, 2020, unfortunately, you have to manually come to your model and copy this, take it to 2020 and make this zero, right? That's how you manually do it. Now, that's not efficient. Now, some people say, well, we could use an if, if, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that would work, but really what i want you guys to always avoid in your model is using ifs what we need is a flag what you need to do is first of all identify where when exactly we need to flag the year that equity will come in and to do that you simply say equals to my current year period up here are you equal to this one here now if i leave this this way this is going to be an error It's nearly not going to be correct because we need to lock you know this is going to be a relative reference e9 is going to be a relative reference now this is a single cell that controls everything here and the clue for you is this once you select a single cell input just know that you need to make it so let me end your poll just know that once you select a single cell input you need to make it an absolute reference so see this d7 we need to make it an absolute reference. And to do that in Excel, you press F4. You just keep pressing F4. It keeps changing the referencing. So I have E9 is equal to $D, $7. I enter, and then I go right. You see that it's going to give us true and false is in the correct place. See, my true is in the right place here. This is my true in the right place. Let me see if I have styles already set. I could do a flag style. But anyway, typically, I would like to do a style and conditional format that says if this is true, then give me a nice style. But what we're looking for is true. False, true, 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 um, um, false, true, false, 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 false. If I change this to 2022, you see that our true goes down here. Now, when you talk about uh, Boolean logic, Boolean, Boolean means, false means zero. In Excel, false is zero and true is one. So if you say this flag, multiplied by the money and again this is an input so i need to lock it fully f4 then you get zero so zero false times this is zero now i drag this to the right and you'll see that true times this if i double click this formula you see that it's true times this is not zero it's correct so let me i think this is complaining or something just ignore ignore error i don't like these error messages, sometimes they're smart, sometimes they're not. Ignore, error, we're done. Good. So this true times 100,000 is 100,000. False times 100,000 is 100,000. Now, this is the more efficient way to do it because if I come here and change this to 2020, now the true comes here, and then we get the 100,000 moving correctly. Yeah, 221, I mean 2021. Two, so all your user needs to do is type in when equity comes in, and equity will come into your model at the correct time. So that is how you do that. What's the next one? The next one is identify a time block. So identify a time block. That's what we're going to do next. Now look at this demo. Let's see. You have all these. Let's, let's just use, we're going to use uh, an amortizing loan as an example. So I have this loan amount. So this loan amount here, I have this loan amount, 200, let's call it 200 million. Yes, let's say everything is in millions. The loan tenor, that means how many years, this is going to be a five-year loan, five-year loan. And then our interest rate is going to be 15%. And then the loan is going to start in period one. I want to be able to change this to period three, for example, and the loan starts in period three. So currently the loan starts in period one, right? So so if you look at this, so we have this um, start period of one. If I change it to two, you want it to start in period two, period one. So let's look at this. If you look at my timing, I have January is my first, um, my, my model historicals is in 2017 is the last historicals and 2018 is where my projections are supposed to start. So if you think about it, this is my debt calculation here. And this is an amortizing loan, which means that this 200 uh, is the principal, and my interest is 15%, but I want to be paying the same amount every every month or every year 
till I finish paying. So that means there's going to be a payment that includes principal and interest. Now in Excel, if you want to calculate that payment, there's a function called PMT, PMT function. So let's just have a look at how this function works. So the PMT function says, what is the rate? And this is the rate, 15%. How many periods is this loan? For what period is it? Five years. So this is an annual interest rate. These are the number of years. And then my present value is this 200, which is the loan amount. That will now calculate how much you need to be paying every month, every year for the next five years. So if we scroll down, this is a simple schedule we have. We have our beginning balance, which is last year's ending balance. We have our new debt, which is this 200 uh, million. Then we have our repayment, which is 29.7. How did I get the repayment as 29.7? We'll check that. This is the principal repayment. And then you have your ending balance. Now, if you pay this principal repayment every year for the next five years, you will get zero. So, so this is year five. If you scroll up, you see that this is year five. So this is when the loan gets fully paid. But you can see that this continues the calculation because we have no masks or flags. This is actually the correct schedule, right? This one here, the correct schedule. How did we calculate that? Well, this is the payments. You know, we already had the payments. The payments worked fine. These are the payments, 559.7. But then your interest payment is simply, let me do that here. Interest payment is simply equal to this loan, right? Or this balance of loan. Interest payment, if I sum this two up, if I sum my beginning and, and my new debt, so this is the actual loan. So this loan, right? If I multiply this loan by interest rate, which is up here, see this interest rate right at the top, this is what will give me my interest of 30. So if I drag this to the right, you see that then I have my interest of this. This is the same as this, isn't it? So if my interest payment portion is 25.6, 25.6, then my payments, you know, this is my payments. That means the difference between my payments and my interest should be my Repayment, which is principal repayment. So principal repayment is your total payment minus your interest payment. Okay, so that's how all this math works at the bottom. What's the problem with this math? The problem is we are over depreciating. We're not depreciating uh, when we need to, I mean, not depreciating, sorry. <laughs> We're not calculating the debt dynamically. So if I come here and say, look, do you know what? My loan doesn't start in year one. It starts in year three. Nothing is happening here. I mean, I, I need this 200 to come in in year three, like here. Not here, right? So but it's all messed up. Nothing's working. So for us to do this automation, the first thing we need is a counter. We need to know which period are we currently in. Like this is period one. This is period two. This is period three. So we need a counter. So counter is going to be equal to the left, which is blank, plus one. This is how you do a simple counter. You do that, you drag it right, Control R. That's your simple counter. <clears throat> Sorry for that. Then loan start flag. When is the loan starting? We already knew when the loan was starting. You remember we did that in the previous um, example. So loan start period is three. So loan starts on period three. So all we need to do is identify, hey, this period, are you equal to this? On F4, we did this before. We did that in the first example. So this identifies when my loan started, right? So you can see that my loan is starting in period three. If I change this to one, my loan starts in the correct time. Next step, we need to do loan period mask. When exactly is this loan period? So let me change this to three, for example. If I change this to three, when is my loan period? Um, is my loan active here? No. Nope. Is my loan active here? Mm, nope. Is my loan active here? Yes. Is my loan active here? Yes, it is. Is my loan active here? Yes, it is. Because my loan starts here and it lasts for five months or five years. So this is supposed to be my active period for my loan. One, two, three, four, five. I'm supposed to see true all the way there. And then I see false, false, false. That my loan, when my loan starts. Well, I know from this, this true mass, this is when my loan starts. But then I also need to know how, I mean, how long my loan lasts. 
So I can, I can know my when my loan starts, but I also need to know how long does it last. So there seems to be two conditions here. We are checking that um, we're checking that hey, this period that I have here, it needs to either be greater than or equal to this cell here. Do we agree? So this period here, the only time your loan starts, well, it has to be greater than or equal to this. Now, since I'm clicking on this, I need to lock it, right? Therefore, let, let's do this. Is the first condition. Let's just check that. Let's go, let's go right. Let's check that. Okay. So this one finds out when did the loan start? You can see that the loan started in three. So three is greater than or equal to three. But then it continues as true, true, true. Let's assume that the loan period is only for three years. Okay. Or should I say four years? Let me make it there. Four years. Four. So here I'm saying up here, I'm saying that the loan tenor is for four years. And up here, that the loan start is, is three. So my loan start is three, and I need it to last only four years. But look at it. It's true, true, true correctly, but this true shouldn't be true. It should be false. What I need is these periods should be false. So that means I need to trap when it, when it ends. So this condition conditions here, one, but another one. So I'm going to write the other one down here. I'm going to say equals to your loan should really end. When should it end? It should end, yeah, yeah testing whether this, right? You're not testing whether this one, are you, are you less than? Are you less than what? When should the loan end? The loan should end after four years, but four years after number three, after three, right? So if you're starting in period three and ending four years after period three, that means it's ending in what? Period three, four, five, six, so six. So that's going to be this period, I'm going to say, is going to end in when it starts, therefore, plus the number of periods of the loan, yeah, minus one. I want you to think through that a little bit, yeah? So the loan is going to end at when it starts plus how long it lasts minus one. Because if it starts at three, it's starting at three. So three, if you, with your fingers, you can say three, four, five, six. Three, four, five, six. So it's ending in period six. So how do I get six? So that's three plus four, that's four, is seven, seven minus one. So it's going to end, it has to be less than actually or equal to that, this thing, which is six. So I say in period one, are you less than or equal to six? Of course it will be for this one. But if I scroll right all the way to the right, are you less than or equal to period six is when it's going to end, right? Period six. So yes, you can see true stops here and then false, false, false. So this one tells us when it stops correctly. This one tells us when it starts. So we need to combine these two calculations together. When does it stop and when does it start? And that is what how you do an identifying a time block. When you're identifying a time block, you're identifying the starting and the ending, and you're combining the starting and ending together. So this is my starting calculation. We're saying, hey, when should I start this loan? Oh, I should start at three. So this is identifying the starting. This one is identifying the stopping, and we need to combine both. So all I need to do is copy this, copy, and come to this one. And since I have two conditions, we can use the AND function. So the AND function, I open that AND function. This is my first logical calculation. Then I put a comma and I control V, paste that second logic. Right? And I close my bracket. So this is your construct. This one says, hey, period, this time period I'm currently in in my model. Are you greater than or equal to the time period that they said that the loan should start? So the answer here is no, I'm not greater. No, I'm not greater. Yes, I'm greater and I'm equal to the time period that the loan is supposed to start. That's a three. And then the next condition is, hey, time period, are you less than or equal to when they said that the loan should end? When you combine the two, I'll just delete this. You don't need this. And you drag it to the right. That's when you now get the exact time that the loan should start and the loan should end. And if I come here and change the loan tenor to two years, you'll see that your true is in 
just the two years that is correct, which is loan starts in period three, ends in period four. See, loan starts in period three, and it lasts for only two periods. So this is your loan period mask, very key. Once you get your loan period mask, you're in business, then you now know how long your loan is going to last. And that way you, you are now going to program it into your model to, to say, okay, when should the money come in? When should the money go out? That kind of stuff. So that's what we're going to put in here now. So this your mean, when is it going to come in? We're just going to say equal to new debt is going to come in when the flag says so. So when this flag will multiply this flag by the money, this money, and that is how the money will come in. We already did this in the first example. So you guys, it's not so difficult now. See, this money is coming in at the right time. Next step is, okay, now my repayment, your repayment is simply equal to uh, this minus this. So we're going to do all the calculations for payments here. Your payments, this actual payments, this is this payment. You remember, it's just a payment calculation. We're saying this payment should only be active when the loan is active. And look at it, the loan will be active when this mask is active. So this payment, which is equal to this cell for payment, should only be active, multiplied, when my loan is active, which is what this loan mask does. So we enter, and I drag right, Control R. Right, so now my loan is coming in at the right time. Can you see that? in at the right time because I've used this mask. Now, my repayment, my interest payments is a simple matter of summing my beginning and my new loan times my interest rate. So there's nothing special here. Interest rate comes in. So this is my total payment. This is my interest payment. And then this is my principal payment, which would be this minus this. And you can see how perfect it is. It's working perfectly. My loan came in in this period. And then I paid back principal. Then my balance is now this, and then I paid that principal. And, and these are my interest payments. And now I can come here and I can change this to, okay, this loan is going to last four years this time. And I just by saying four here, you can see that the loan is now lasting four years. And then if I say, okay, no, do you know, I'm going to start this loan in period one. In loan in period one, can you see it's just as if it's automatically shifting, perfectly shifting. So this is a very, very cool way of using your masks and flags to make your loan calculations very nicely dynamic module but before before i go to the next uh, one uh, those that are doing financial modeling those that want to do the exams you want to do the financial modeling exams let me play you a video that we just recorded from the very first advanced financial modeler in nigeria her name is ade tutu ade tutu oludare and let me just play that video for you just play how she did it so just watch this short video so I would like to welcome a special guest today. Her name is Ade Tutu Oludare, and she's the very first advanced financial modeler issued and certified by the Financial Modeling Institute. So we did the exams in April 2018, and she is the first qualified advanced financial modeler. So Ade Tutu, you're welcome. Thank you. Yes, and uh, we'd just like to share your experiences as in how, why advanced financial modeling? What's, what's the fascination with modeling? Okay, um, why advanced financial modeling? Early this year, when I was to go on training and then I was to write a training plan, I just decided I wanted something different from the usual. I work in internal control, so I didn't just want to do anything related to control. We knew or all that is known already, so I just wanted something different, something that would help my career as an accountant. So I looked through all the um, training calendar that was sent and then I discovered Deep Brown and then I saw a few of the trainings they had and then financial modeling res resonated with me. Of course, I used to do a few modeling for people, not the professional way. <laughs> so I just felt it was a good time to learn how to do it professionally and then, you know, just be best at it. Mm -hmm. And then I decided to enroll. Yeah, but there are many financial modeling courses. You don't need to do an exam and do that rigor of an exam. Why did you go all the way? <laughs> all the, the way. <laughs> okay, so when I chose the course, I didn't know you had an exam. Oh, okay. So I just chose it to learn. And then voila, when I got there, I saw there was an exam. Mm. And I, I really don't like to give up at things. Mm. So I, I told myself I was going to do the exam. Mm. So I went for it. Okay, and, and, and where do you work? What's your, give a small background to your career? Okay, um, I work with Stambik IBTC. I work in internal control department. 
Um, I'm an accountant. I'm a chartered accountant. I have a CCA. Um, so I started working with Stambic three years ago. And it's been a very interesting journey working for Stambic Ivits. It's a great institution. They paid for this exam. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Nice. Right. So, so you're officially uh, known in the institution as an advanced financial modeler. Okay, so when I got the results, I, I sent it to my L&D, that's Learning and Development, um, Head of Learning and Development. I sent it to them to say, okay, thank you for paying for those costs. Yeah. And I've done you proud by passing. Yeah. <laughs> Identifying an intermittent time period. So here we're, we're going to identify, what about if they say something like, we're going to contribute equity every first quarter for the next two years, something like that. In your model how, how do you identify that and then someone else changes no 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 we're going to contribute equity every second quarter in the next two years so <laughs> let's 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 see that okay let's see that in the model now we're going to talk about identifying an intermittent time period so let's click on the plus sign so let's have a look at this so um let me hide this i don't think we need this and hide that so here we have amount of equity let's assume 600 million and uh, they need to contribute this every single year. So every year, this, this amount needs to be contributed every year. But this is a quarterly model. So if you look at the periodicity of this model, it's a quarterly model. So we have 1st of January 2019 to 31st of March 2019, April 19 to June, July to September. So it's a quarterly model, right? Now we want to identify which of the quarters are we contributing this uh, 600 million. Is it every first quarter we contribute it? Is it every second quarter we contribute it? Is it every third quarter we contribute it? Or is it every fourth quarter we contribute it? And how long is this contribution going to last? We're going to start this contribution 1st of January 2019, or is it starting it on in July? When are we starting this contribution? And when are we ending this contribution, right? So quite a lot of asks here. When is the contribution, which quarter is it coming in? And how long is this contribution going to last? So here we do our normal counter. Usually also our counter is equal to the previous cell plus one. Just a simple counter, right? So let's just highlight that, control R. Okay, it's a longer model for us. Control R. Right, then quarter identifier. Hmm. We need to be able to identify is this quarter one? Is this quarter two? Is this quarter three? Is this quarter four? Now, there are many ways to do this, plenty different formulas to do this, but let me give you the coolest one I like. The one I like is the mod function to identify what quarter we're in. So if I say the mod or mode, I don't know how to pronounce it, mod, mode. <laughs> so the mod function or mode function, uh, what does it say? It says returns the remainder after a number is divided by a divisor. Uh, that's a mouthful. Returns a remainder after a number is divided by a divisor. Now, um, if you think about it, this month is March. First of all, we need to find out what month our, we are in. As in, I'm going to find the month of this cell, this ending period. What is the month? So this is month three. If I scroll right, this would be month three, month six, month nine, and month 12. We know that month three is quarter one, month six is quarter two, month nine is quarter three, month 12 is quarter four. So mathematically speaking, if we take this and divide it by three, right? You would, in fact, you would get one. If you divide six by three, you'll get two. If you divide 12 by three, you get one, two, three, four. You get so so really that's all you need to do to identify quarters. It's one, two, three, or four. So month month three divided by uh, three is one, month six divided by three. So this is a quick way of, of doing that. For the mod function, if I had used the mod function, mod I'll simply say hey mod what month uh, is this right what month is that uh comma three and if i say comma three the remainder will be zero right there's no there's no remainder so it's it's really like the opposite of mod is what we're doing and the opposite of mod for those that like functions a lot is quotient so the quotient is returns the integer portion of a divisor Ugh. 
So quotient enter will be one. For all that story, we can just do the simple division ourselves. Since we know it, we always divide by three. So this is uh, how to identify our quarter period. I'm just going to highlight that to the right. Come on, highlight to the right. You know, see how I'm highlighting manually. I don't really like that. So what I do in my models is I put a, I just put like a blocker here, something like that. I just type one or something. Yeah, I'll make sure it's not visible so that when I want to drag something, I do Control Shift right, then it stops at the blocker, and then I go left one step and Control R. It's just some tricks, right? Okay, so here we have our quarter one, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four, quarter five. Nicely done, no issues. That's fine. So let's quickly rush. You have so many, so much more to do. Start mask. When is this? Um, uh, first of all, let, if this is your quarter identifier, let's find out when, when the contribution should come in. So let me put it before the start mask. Let me say uh, contribution. Uh, money con contribution or something country or quarter identifier something quarter identifier or quarter flag it's going to flag the quarter so there's it's going to flag all the different times that the money is supposed to come in so the money is supposed to come in when this is equal to this guy up here isn't it our four so we have our false oh have our false, so do control R here. Yep, control R. So true is going to come in always in quarter four. True here, yeah. true here, yeah. and, and the like. Now, true can come in there, that's nice and good, but we need to know that this loan is still active. So we need a, a mask for, we need like the second uh, so example I gave you where is this loan active? So what's the start mask? What's the end mask? So and then the loan, uh, or mean, I mean the not the loan now. The uh, when is this parameter active? You know, it's going to be active only between first of January and thirty first of December, right? So how it's like almost like when is it active? So let's calculate the start. Is this start and end date, is, it, is this date here in between these two dates? Is this somewhere inside here? Is this 1st of January? Is you in here? So we're saying, hey, um, this 1st of January, right? We're actually testing two conditions. So we're, we can start with an and straight away. We'll say and, right? This 1st of January should either be greater than or equal to this and also less than or equal to this. That's when we know it's in there. So the first of January, are you greater than or equal to the starting period? And are you also are you also less than or equal to the ending period? Right? So we're testing whether this is within this. So that's one. We test that. And then also we're testing the ending period. Ending period, right? Is it also, is it ending period less, kind of less than or equal to this two, so to say? But let's let's just do the starting period first. So if I come in here and I say something like thirty uh, first of June, twenty twenty, right? Twenty twenty. I'm going to get a false here, which is correct, right? So I'm going to take this all the way right. So this just identifies, oh, you can see, good, good, good. So you can see that it's not greater than, so this guy, uh, 1st of January, has to, be, has to be at least less than, because we want to know whether or not uh, the start period. So this start period, are we less than this? So start period is, is actually prior to this, and then the end period, and we're multiplying the start and the end periods together. So your start period, 1st of January, 2019. We, we need to know, has this loan already started? So frankly speaking, we should actually take it, this loan, are you less than, are you less than, less than this, this 1st of January, have you really, really started? So we don't even need this. It's a good thing that we got this, I did this too. All I want to know is whether this loan has started. So are you, are you here, this guy, are you less than or equal to 
e less than or equal to my model start period actually so you see if i control r this you see that yes this loan has started it had already started so the start period is within this time frame if i change this to uh, june or so then we know that it hasn't started here it's started here so first of june it had already started so first of june aha uh -huh. now look at it first of june is already started in here you can you see that it's already started in there so uh, how do we capture this see first of june is in here somewhere so even though it's it's not it's actually um greater that is less than or equal to this that means this start period look at let's use this see this start period yes this is after this but then it's within this period it's within uh, first of april and within 30th of june so june is in here somewhere hmm? june is in here somewhere so what we should be using to check it really is probably the ending period so the ending period are you less than this so you're either less than this or you are greater than this one of any one of them that's true should be fine it's either that you're greater than this or you're, you're less than this less than this period but we're now checking the starting period of our, our model to know whether or not this loan is still active right so let's modify that we check this out say okay are you and blah 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 are you less than or equal to um um i49 and are you greater than so this guy if i put the or here as the loan first of june is in between so first of june is in between those dates so the model the the loan is still is still active because it started off at the time period this time period here so if i check this time period here it is this first of june is still within that time period so it's definitely going to be greater than I just say this 46 yeah it's going to be it's going to be greater than or equal to this guy this is a starting point for our, our model it's greater than that and it hasn't ended and it's definitely greater than that but it should be less than or equal to this one here so that's this same guy yeah f4 should be less than or equal to if I close it, so that's for this one here. Oops, sorry, I didn't close all the brackets correctly. So less than I call to this, close this and this, comma. Oh, I didn't type and properly. And, 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 and yeah, here we go. So this works. Right. So if I copy this formula all the way to the end, let's just test it now. So the first of June is true here, is within this, and is still on start mask still on but then the end mask when will it end we're seeing that the end mask saying that okay this loan is not active at all this start mask yes is active actually active but then the end mask is actually checking whether this the loan has ended with this 31st of december 2022 when is this loan going to end let's make this easier for us to check let's say uh 2021 all right so if this loan is starting at 1st of June, that means it's starting here, 1st of June, and it should end, um, where should it end? 2021 December, it should end somewhere here. So we should see through only up to here. We should see through only up to here, and then this should start being false. All of this should start being false. Make that false. How do we, what do we ask Excel? to to be sure that look this loan has ended it shouldn't shouldn't occur here shouldn't be here right so if you look at it we're looking at 31 december so we're saying yes all this start is fine but the end we need to stop it this end that means this ending date should be this date should be less than or equal to this for it to say that it's, it has really ended so if i come here and i say hey you this um, ending date right are you are you less than if, if it's ending it's the only time that it should still be within 
is when it is before this date. Anything after that, anything after this date, well, it's really ended, isn't it? It has ended. So are you before less than or equal to this? Oh, no, no, are you greater than? Why, why am I mixing two things up? Uh, so if it's, if this date, let's start the, if this date, sorry, this one here is less than or equal to this date, we lock this, let's drag that all the way right, blah, 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 all the way right, all the way right, all the way right, control R. Okay, so has the loan ended? I mean, has the period ended? Nope. So that's why we say it's true. End date is still active. We are 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 active all the way till when? You're not active here. So it's not active here at all. It's active here and here, but it's not active here. So if it's not active here, that means it's already ended. Right? It's ended. So that's one way of doing it. And then you can now multiply this two together. This times this. And then you get it's true. So both of them are true. So the only time that they're going to be active is when, and then that's when you'll see one. You know, I said uh, this is one, one, one. This means it's active, 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 active. And then it's not active, not active, not active. Right? So, so that's one way of doing this. There are quite a few ways of doing it. So this is telling us whether it's active or not. We just use this as help as this loan is active at this period. I mean, this uh, not loan as in the period is active. This timing is active right now. So the timing is not active when we, this, this is when the quarter, when we're actually getting the contribution in that particular quarter. What quarter is it? Every fourth quarter, if you look up here, every fourth quarter, we're getting our contribution. So that is contribution is coming in in this fourth quarter, true. Then another true, another fourth quarter, true, right? So we're saying that when are we supposed to get a contribution and are we still active? So we're supposed to get the contribution here, right? And the question is, yes, we get the contribution there, but is this loan even active for us to, I mean, is this timing active for us to get that contribution? Yes. So true and one, you know, one and true are the same thing. So what about if I scroll right next, true, see, true and True and one, true and one. But then here we have true, that's a problem, we have true, but we don't have one. So we don't have one, which means that it's not active. So this times this will not give us anything. So that means, yes, we know that this is quarter four, but our active, the timing is not active currently. So, so that's the active timing, and then this is the saying that when the money is supposed to come in as a contribution. So for those two, what we now do is now come here and say, when should the money come in? Which quarter should it come in? And then we multiply that by, are we active? Is this time period active? And then we multiply that one by, so we're multiplying this by this by the money. So let me say the money is here. I'll put Let me put some money in here, right? Equity payments. Let's just say equity payments is in there. Let, oh, no, this is the equity payments up here. Or all here. This 600 million is there. So I lock that and say enter. So the money didn't come in. Money didn't come in here. The money didn't come in here, but the money came in here. And money didn't come in here. Didn't come in here. Didn't come in here, but guess what came in here? So I just drag this formula all the way right, and you'll see that it works for all the periods. All right. So the money is coming in at the right times. It's coming in here, it's coming in here, it's coming in here, it's coming in there, but it's not coming in here. That's because we've said that this is the end, this is October 20, October to December 2022. And if you look at the condition here, we're saying that, look, it's not active anymore, it has ended. So if I change this to 2023 for some reason, 2023, that means we're still contributing every quarter all the way to 2023. You'll see that 
it continues to contribute. See, it's contributing now. It's contributing because it hasn't ended. It's not 2023 yet. For every quarter, it's still contributing here, but it will stop contributing after 2023. And here we can also say, you know, the contributions should come in every second quarter, not every every quarter, every second quarter. Now it's coming in every second quarter, every second quarter. All right. So it looks complex, but what you've just done is translated this into a single row, a single row of calculations that just automatically works. Right. So we've spent some time there. We just need another eight minutes of time so that we can go through the last two. So I'm just going to take an extra time from you guys. Um, let's see the next two. What are the next two? Um, the next two timing flags or timing calculations that you can use in a model. Let's quickly check that. So what we just did now is we did the identify an intermittent time period. So intermittent time period is what we did. Then here we want to identify a cascading time period. What does that mean? Cascading time period. Any idea? What's, what's cascading time period? Well, mostly uh, cascading time periods are usually it's like a waterfall, like a time period waterfall. And, and for that, it's usually depreciation. It's depreciation that usually has that. So let's do the demo of that. How do you calculate your depreciation calculations? There's so many ways to do that, but let's let's look at let's look at one. So identifying a cascading time period. Let's click on that. So here I have um, depreciation. I have like a depreciation schedule. Now this is just a simple schedule you have your assets so look at this i have my capex i'm buying 10 million 10 million 20 million 20 million 30 million 30 40 blah 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 this is this is these are the assets i'm contributing in these various years right of my model and i would like to depreciate these assets over four years so that means this 10 million it's going to be depreciated over four years so you build something like this you just build a simple schedule like this you list out these assets you list them out here and the simplest way to kind of list all of these things here is to use the transpose function then you list out all these years as well you you list them out down here as well and then what you're saying in this cell for example is in 2019 i want to calculate the depreciation for the assets i bought in 2019 then here in 20 19 i'm calculating the depreciation for the asset i bought in 2021 that doesn't exist 2021 didn't exist in 2019 so if i come here for example to 2022 here i'm saying 2021 for example 2021 i want to calculate the depreciation of the asset i bought in 2019 in 2021 here i want to calculate the asset depreciation for the asset i bought in 2020. so the first thing is should there be depreciation for this 2019 asset in 2020? Yes, because this 2019 asset is going to be depreciated over what? Four years, that's one year, two years, three years, four years. So I expect to see true all the way here, right? I expect to see true, 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 right? It's going to depreciate. And then there should be a fault here. It says, no, I'm not depreciating fault here. It says, no, I'm not depreciating, right? And what about this 2020? 2020. I bought the asset in 2020, which means for sure there shouldn't be any depreciation here. The asset doesn't exist in 2029, right? Only exists in 2020. Then I'm going to have true, 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 right? And then true here. Yeah. So for four years, and then false. So now if I change this input here to let's say three. What I now expect to see is true, 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 and then this one will be false. And then this asset that I bought in 2022 will be two, true, 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 and then false. All this manual stuff I'm doing, I shouldn't be doing manual stuff because it's supposed to be automated, right? So that's what we're going to do. The first thing we're going to do is try and identify the timing flag as in when exactly should the depreciation be active and when exactly shouldn't be it be active. So I'm going to use 
I'm going to use this. I will do the calculation here so it makes sense. So if this is three years, first thing you're going to ask yourself is this. Hey, this asset I bought in 2020, 2020, am I supposed to be depreciating it in 2022? Right? That's one, one, one question. I mean, is it, is, it, is it supposed to be depreciated? Should I have a true or a false here? That's the question. So I want you to think about it. What should the formula be inside this cell? The clue is this. You need to find the start. It's, it's almost like the, the timing thing we calculated where we had to find the start and the end together. You want to find out when is it active. So, so for example, uh, the depreciation I'm calculating here must start in 2020. So where, where it has to start. So for it to start, you're saying that this year, are you less than this? I mean, or less than or equal to this for, for you to know whether it should start. It should start whenever, or should I say, um, um, this year is greater than, sorry, greater than or equal to this. So that's when you know it, it will start, right? That's, you know, the starting point. So either that this is less than or equal to this, or this is greater than or equal to this. So that's when you know the start. So let, let me click this. So I say, hey, you, what I'm locking, I'm locking the column. So this is the column lock. It's a column constant. Are you, for example, are you less than or equal to this one here? And this has to be a row lock. So, so this is identifying the starting points. So do we, this is the starting. If I come to the left here and come, continue coming here and then come here, you will see that this is false. This is false. Why is this false? Because you can't start a depreciation of an asset you bought in 2020. You can't start it in 2019. You must start it in 2020. So this identifies the start. Which is, the problem is it doesn't identify when it should stop. This identifies when it should start. Now we need to formula to identify when it should stop. So if I have the start, which is fine, what about the stop? When should it stop? That, well, it should stop, if it's starting here, it should stop 2020 plus 3. It should stop 2020, 2021, 2022. It should stop in 2022. So we need to add 3 to this. And then now ask ourselves again that whether or not that year, so we have our start. Let's do our stop. Let's just do our stop. So when should it stop? Really, it should stop by saying that this year, this year must be, yeah, for it to stop less than this year, which is this one, right? F4, F4, lock in the column. Here we're supposed to have locked the row. So here we're locking the column. And then we're adding this three up here. So we're saying 2020 plus three is 2023. This must be less than it. Or we could say this must be less than or equal to this plus this minus one. All right, so when we enter, this actually identifies when it should stop. Look at it. It doesn't identify start. All it identifies is stop. It should stop here, 2022. Why? Because 2020, 2021, 2022, if I change this, for example, to two years, two, it's only depreciating for two years, you can see that, yes, it will stop here. It's supposed to, not supposed to depreciate here. It's only supposed to depreciate this too. So now we have our start and we have our stop. We need to put an AND. We need to put an AND function. We put an AND function. I'm looking at the formula bar up here. We put an AND function. The AND function will check and see. Let me just zoom in so you can see this clearly. Let me zoom in a little bit more. Okay. So here we're going to say AND. This has identified our stop. If you remember, how did we identify our start? We said that this cell, which is hiding to the left, said, are you less than or equal to this cell up here? And then we locked our row, right? That was the start. Then comma, this was the stop. So I have my start and stop. Now, if I copy this all the way to the end, 
entire table, entire large table all the way down. Okay, I don't know where does it end. Okay, up here. Enter. So you're gonna see your trues and falses all around the place, trues and falses. Let me make this conditional format a little better so we can see what we're doing. All I need to identify is the true. So it's not a very smart conditional format. Edit. So now this makes more sense. So if you look at it, you can see that shit over two years. Shade over two years, depreciate over two years. And if I change this to three, it says depreciating over three years. If I change this to four, you can see it's working. Now, this is just identifying when to depreciate. Yeah, you say one year, which does make sense, but it's one year depreciation, two years. And once you've identified when to depreciate, then you all you now need to do, because you understand uh, Boolean logic, you multiply that amount by the actual asset the asset, you lock the column, divided by the useful life. Is this any one of them for a four, a four? So that will now be your depreciation value, which you can now call to RD. And you now have your depreciation calculating perfectly. Here and there, right? And this is the formula. So that's one way of calculating depreciation, and this is how you do a cascading calculation. Pretty neat. So if I change this to uh, four years, you see the depreciation is four years, change it to three years, depreciation is three years. Right. Let's quickly jump to the last, last thing, and then we're done. Sorry for taking more of your time. And uh, This is cascading, which is your depreciation calculation. Just to recap, that's the formula in there. There are many ways to calculate this. Other people use an if and stuff. I prefer to just use a simple and, no ifs. And there we go. Now, lastly, if I jump back to our slides, before we close, so what the last thing we're going to do, we've done the identifying a cascading time period. The next and last thing is managing two time periodicities in a model. Two Two time periodicities in a model, what does that mean? That means we have maybe a monthly model and we require annual reports in a monthly model. So that's very easy. So it's not gonna take us much time at all. So let's uh, check that out. Managing two periodicities in a model. So here we have managing two periodicities in a model. Let me give you the example we have. Click on the plus sign. All right, so let's pretend this is our model to the right. We have our financial model. This is the days and monthly model. This is the ending dates for the monthly model. And these are the figures in the model. So we have our revenue, our operating costs, our EBITDA, our depreciation. Yep, and this is our model. So what we want to do is give a summary, an annual summary of this. So an annual summary for year 2019 will be all of this all the way to this cell yep so let's, let's just minimize that so i'll just sum up all of this this is 2019 revenue and then if i scroll right this would be 2020 revenue so how you do the annual model is you let's create a small template so this is your annual. So what we need to do is now just calculate the revenue, operating costs, EBITDA, and depreciation from this monthly model. So we're going to have two periodicities. This will be in another sheet, but I'll leave that for you here. So how do we know total 2019? The first thing you should do is come and calculate what year this is here. So if I'm doing monthly to yearly, I can say this is equal to what? What is this? What year is this? So I say it's equal to year of the cell. So this tells me the year. And I can drag that all the way right. Drag that all the way right. Right, 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 right. That's quite a long model. Wow. Okay. All right. Ah, the monthly model. So this just identifies the year. That's the very first thing you do. Once you identify the year, you now come here and do an equals to sum if. All right, sum if. range criteria and some range 
So what's the sum if? Let me open this up. So the range and criteria. So the cri and we'll start with the criteria. So what do you really want in this cell is everything that is 2019. That's what you want. That's your criteria. Everything. When I come to this cell, it's everything that's 2020. So 2019. But because I'm dragging right and dragging down, I need to lock the row. So I'm locking the row. Then my range for checking this 2019 is this one. From here all the way to the right. Control shift R. All right? All the way to the right. And for this one, you're going to lock. You're going to do a constant column. Column lock. I'm locking the L and I'm locking the um, BS. So I'm locking the column so they don't shift. In fact, I can lock everything really. I don't need to lock on the column. In fact, I should also lock everything because this whole period is supposed to be static. It doesn't shift at all. Because I don't I actually don't want it to go down either. I don't want it to go left and right, and I don't want it to go down. I'm locking it fully. So I'm saying this range here, go and look for 2019 in this range. Then sum which range? We're now summing this since I'm in revenue here. I'm summing revenue all the way to the right. So I'm summing my revenue. For this one, obviously, I will need to lock the column so that I can drag this, this formula. When I drag my formula down, it should move down. So here I'm locking the column. So I'm saying go and look for all 2019 revenue and sum it for me and say OK. Then you get this figure. And then once you get this figure, you can now drag that, copy this, click, click, copy. And place it all the way here and copy, paste it all the way here. And copy and paste it all the way here. And let me just use 2021 as an example. If I sum, do a sum for 2021. So 2021, let's go and sum the revenue for 2021. I highlight from 2021 January all the way to December, right? So we agree that this is 2021's revenue. We enter, and you see that the figure, oh, oh the, the figure doesn't look the same, does it? So 2021, let's F2, let's check. Did I highlight? 2021 all the way to... Oh, can you see that? I added 2022, so it's supposed to stop here, right? 2021, enter, and you see it's exactly the same as this. So this formula works. So look at the formula again. Let's just zoom in so you can see it. This is your formula that does that small magic. Sum if the periodicity you're looking for, the row containing the periodicity you're looking for, and then the actual periodicity, particular value, and then the sum where you want to sum. And that's how you get it, right? And that's it. So that's how you use different periodicities. You take the lower granularity. Your model must always be the lowest granularity. So monthly, monthly. And then you can sum it up to annual. You can sum it up to quarter.